Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Tombstone Tourist. This afternoon I'm in Mount Hope Cemetery in Florence, South Carolina. And I'm going to be visiting the final resting place of one of the most notable law enforcement officers for the FBI back in the era of Bonnie and Clyde, John Dillinger, Pretty Boy Floyd, Machine Gun Kelly, Ma Barker, the gangsters of the 1930s. This was the man that was put in charge of bringing them to justice. We're gonna be visiting the final resting place of Melvin Purvis. Here we are, the final resting place of noted FBI agent Melvin Purvis. Melvin Purvis was born on October 24th, 1903 in nearby Timmonsville, South Carolina. As a young man, he joined the FBI under the leadership of J. Edgar Hoover. And as a member of the FBI in 1933, he led a group of agents that gunned down bank robber and public enemy number one, John Dillinger in Chicago, outside of the Biograph movie theater. In 1934, he led a group that gunned down gangster Charles Arthur Pretty Boy Floyd in an Ohio farm field. His success eventually turned into his downfall as he was lauded by the public and received a lot of public attention for his exploits and his fight against the gangsters of the 1930s and his fame led him to be kind of uh, ostracized by his supervisors, including J. Edgar Hoover, who found it very distasteful that one of his agents was getting more publicity than he was. Hoover, who liked to be the center of attention when it come to all things with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, eventually led to Melvin's leaving the uh, agency, not by his own choosing, but uh, Hoover ended up driving him out. And not only did Hoover drive him out of the agency to show his disdain, he put roadblocks in front of Melvin when he sought employment with other agencies. And I think it's pretty well documented that J. Edgar Hoover was not the most pleasant man to be around. He ruled with an iron fist and it's gone down in history that he's kept secret files on everybody from presidents to movie actors. And if you crossed him, he held a grudge and he didn't like it when Melvin Purvis was getting more publicity than he was. And when he couldn't rein him in or change the public perception of Melvin Purvis, he run him out of the agency. Not only run him out of the agency, he put roadblocks in place to see to it that he wouldn't gain any type of other employment. After leaving the agency, Melvin returned to South Carolina where he made his home until 1960. On the evening of February the 29th, 1960, 
Melvin Purvis was found dead at the top of his staircase at his home here in Florence, South Carolina. He had a single gunshot wound to his head. The official investigation determined that it was suicide. But over the years, other facts have suggested otherwise. And to this day, there are people who knew Melvin Purvis that claim his death is a mystery. A lot of folks don't think he committed suicide. Some of the people that have been interviewed over the past few years said it was more or less probably an accidental death that he might have died cleaning his weapon and the gun discharged accidentally but others claimed that he would be cleaning his weapon at the top of a staircase. While the official cause of death for Melvin Purvis is a suicide, his death remains a mystery. Melvin is resting here in the cemetery in Florence, South Carolina, next to his wife. Well, it's getting late in the day. I still have a ways to go before I get to my hotel. So I'm going to end this video right here and get back on the road. I hope you found something interesting in this video as we visited the grave of noted Depression era FBI agent, Melvin Purvis. If you have, please give me a thumbs up below. And if you want to keep up with all of my travels, be sure to ring that bell and subscribe. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and enjoy the journey. And I'll see you down the road. So long, everyone.